For this video, I'm going to talk about blood spatter and uh, how it can be analyzed to tell you information about a crime. All right. So there's a lot of different information you can learn from blood spatter evidence. All right. You can learn about the type of weapon uh, that was used, maybe how many times a person was you know, hit or attacked. You might be able to figure out if the um, the suspect was right or left handed. You could figure out, you know, where people were located and uh, the movement uh, of the crime. Uh, you might be able to figure out, you know, specific types of injuries, uh, you know, from the evidence. Uh, it could also tell you information about how long ago it was uh, committed. And you can even get information about, you know, how long, um, you know, it took for the person um, to die, you know, was it immediate or did it, was it a little bit more prolonged? So there's a lot of information you can get from blood spatter evidence. First here, how is blood evidence detected? Cause you know that, um, sometimes, uh, you might not see it or somebody tried to clean this up. So there's a lot of different ways to detect blood evidence here and, uh, you know, identify it as blood. So first, uh, you could use a UV light source. This could identify traces of blood or, you know, body fluids that you can't really see under normal lighting. Um, there's also these, what we call presumptive tests that we use to identify blood, all right? Basically, uh, if it senses that hemoglobin is present, all right, it reacts and kind of gives you a positive result here. So there's a few different ways you can do this. The one I want to talk about is the Kasselmeyer test, because this is probably the one that you've seen on the crime scene shows, all right? Basically, what happens is you would swab a sample that you might think is blood, all right? And then you would treat that sample on your Q-tip with a little bit of peroxide and phenolphthalein and see if you get this dark pink color change, all right? So if you look over here in the picture, you can see that that swab turned bright pink. Uh, so the sample that was swabbed was definitely blood, all right? It's called a presumptive test because based on the quick test, it appears to be blood. You can also use something here called luminol, all right? So basically you would spray this on and it will react with blood to kind of glow or produce light. Uh, so this is great because you can use this even if the blood was cleaned or removed. This will, this will sometimes glow and show you that blood was there. However, the, the kind of bad thing with this is that it usually destroys other evidence. OK, so this would not necessarily be something they would want to use right away um, because it could destroy other evidence that's present. Uh, and then there's another thing here called fluorescein, which is a spray solution as well. It's very similar to luminol uh, and you use UV light and it would kind of glow green. So these are some different tests that can be performed to see that blood was present at a crime scene. Let's talk more about this blood spatter. So what exactly is blood spatter? This is basically the blood stains that are found at a crime scene, all right? Um, and they can tell you a lot of different information, all right, uh, when you analyze them. So there's a lot of vocab that goes along with this. So the origin or the source is basically where the uh, spatter came from. So, you know, a victim or a suspect. Uh, the angle of impact is important as we'll talk about, basically the angle that the blood droplet kind of hits the ground. The parent drop would be the main drop of blood, all right? And then you kind of have these satellite spatters, which are smaller drops of blood that come off of that. And then spines are these pointed edges on the um, parent drop, which can sometimes tell you the uh, direction that the blood came from as well as we will look at. So if you're looking over here on the right, the main circular part would be the parent drop. This other drop that kind of came off of this, that's a satellite spatter. And you can see the little spines that are on the edges there of the parent drop. And this can give you information about uh, movement, direction, and so on. There's three different types of blood stain patterns, okay? So passive blood stains are basically created due to gravity, all right? So if there was blood, say, on a weapon and it kind of dripped off, all right, um, that would be passive blood stain, okay? The gravity caused the blood to drip. And you can kind of see that here in the picture. Projected blood stains occur when there's some type of force being applied. Okay. So if somebody was, you know, being hit 
and the blood's flying or it's um, coming off of the fist as it's, you know, moving uh, or the weapon. Um, something interesting here called arterial spurting. All right, we'll see a picture of that. But that's when the, you know, there's some type of force involved. And then you have transfer or contact blood stain patterns. Basically, when something has blood on it, all right, comes in contact with another surface. So if you had blood on your shoe and you walked on the floor, that'd be like a transfer or a contact pattern. You can see some of these patterns here in the picture. All right, if you look here on the left, this is just a passive fall. Basically, blood is just dripping off of something and it's due to gravity. Uh, here is an arterial spurt. Okay, you can see that would basically happen if, you know, someone's artery got nicked and it's kind of like, I like to think of it as like pumping out blood and it's like shooting out. Um, but then there's other types here. We have smears, all right? If the blood is, you know, smeared across the surface or trails of blood maybe, um, you know, through the woods or, you know, through a house or something like that. And blood can even pool up, you know, if a person's bleeding out uh, for a period of time. Let's talk more about these blood drops, maybe these passive um, blood stains here. So if you had a cut on your finger, all right, basically as the blood goes down off your finger, it's kind of going to form this teardrop shape. And then eventually due to surface tension, it kind of you know, forms a circular sphere, and then it would be that shape until it hits uh, the surface, okay? So you kind of start off with this teardrop shape, and then it kind of goes into a circular drop. What that drop looks like when it hits the surface depends on the surface it's hitting, okay? If the drop hits a smooth surface, it's going to spread out very smoothly, and it's going to form a nice circular pattern, all right? If that drop hits an irregular or bumpy surface, you kind of will then see some of those, uh, you know, uh, satellite droplets or even spines. And you can see that here on the right side. If the surface isn't completely smooth, you kind of see uh, less of a circular pattern in the blood drop itself when it hits. The size of the blood drops are also very important because it can tell you information about uh, how high up that blood drop was when it when it fell. Uh, basically, the higher that the blood is falling, the bigger the drops you would expect to see here. All right, up to a certain point. All right. So basically, if you look in the picture, you can see as you increase, all right, the height of the drop, the drops get bigger up into about six or seven feet. Okay, once you get to six or seven feet, you're not going to see a difference here in size because the drop has reached maximum velocity. But typically, bigger drops mean um, that the drop fell from a higher distance. The size of the drop and the amount of the drops are also very important. It can tell you information here about the type of wound. For example, if you saw a lot of very fine droplets and a lot of them, um, we call that fine mist spatter. That's probably telling you that there was, you know, like a gunshot involved um, versus, you know, if you saw little droplets, that's telling you, okay, there's there's maybe a low velocity or blunt object involved. Um, but voids can be in, uh, important here as well because you can look at a void and you can see like something was missing, all right? Maybe something was there. So if you look on this picture here on the right, it kind of looks like there's something missing from that picture. Maybe there was a weapon there or an object and now it's not there. So the voids in the uh, spatter can tell you information, okay? So you can see over here on the left, the all these tiny drops, that's probably more of a fine mist spatter. So there's probably a gunshot involved. You can also look at these blood drops and determine um, direction from them, all right? So if you just have a blood drop dropping down to a surface at a 90 degree angle, it's gonna be circular and you can't determine or detect any movement here, all right? But if a person's moving and the blood is coming down, um, you know, at an angle, you can determine the direction, okay? So if you look here on the left, if a blood just falls at a direct 90 degree angle, you're not gonna see much in terms of direction. However, okay, if a person's moving and the blood uh, hits, you will get information um, from the, the spines and the parent drop itself. So what happens is the blood kind of moves or points in the direction of the movement. So if you look here on the right, the main drop hits, and then you start to see 
this kind of forward cast off here in front of the blood drop. That's telling you, all right, it's kind of pointing in the direction that the movement was to the right here, okay? So by seeing the kind of smaller spine ahead of the drop, that can tell you which way the um, person might have been moving. A little bit more here with this um, blood direction. So basically what happens is, all right, if you want to look over here on the right, you want to imagine that a person was moving to the right. So they're moving this direction, okay? What happens is the blood is also moving that direction. So it has momentum that keeps it going in the direction uh, that the movement was taking place. So the blood kind of comes down, it hits, and it starts to spread forward. It kind of leaps over itself a little bit and spreads some of those droplets in front of it, okay? So by seeing the droplets here on the right side of this blood drop tells you that the movement was in that direction. So the little drops in front kind of tell you the blood was moving that way, okay? So you have to realize um, that if the drops are on the right side, then the person was moving toward the right. Another important part of blood spatter analysis is something called lines of convergence. All right, basically, if you can go to a crime scene and have, you know, a few drops of blood around, all right, you need at least two drops of blood to do this, all right, you can look at those drops of blood and you can draw straight lines down the center axis of the blood drop to help figure out where they originated from, all right, and you use kind of the direction to key you in too. All right, so if you look at these blood drops here on the left, all right, you can see that when you draw the line back through all of them, all right, they all kind of converge on this area. So where all the lines intersect, that's known as um, this area of convergence. And it basically tells you that more than likely uh, the blood came from that area or a person maybe was standing there and that's kind of where the blood was originating from. All right, so they can use kind of all different uh, methods to do this, uh, but you need to be able to have at least two drops of blood, and then you kind of draw the lines um, through all the blood drops, and then you get that center area where you think it came from. If you look more specifically at this picture, you can see these blood droplets here. All right, if you notice, they all have some kind of um, satellite spatter toward the left side. So that means, okay, the blood was moving in that direction. So this blood drop was moving this way, this one was moving that way, and so on. So that means the blood came from the opposite direction. So you would draw the line through the center, all right, in the opposite direction, and where they intersect, that's your area of convergence. So that's the spot where we think the blood originated from. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is what gunshot spatter would look like, okay? so. If a person was shot here uh, with a gun, all right, so from this picture, what you're seeing is when the bullet goes in, you would see some spatter coming out the front. Obviously, the main spatter would be out the back, okay? But this can give you some information. You would definitely have a bunch of, you know, spots here, a lot of spatter um, in the kind of exit wound, but you would also see some spatter um, from the entrance wound as well, all right? So that's kind of what you would see uh, for a gunshot wound.